So I think as a lot of folks know, um, open enrollment in North Carolina lasts from November 1st to December 15th. Um, NC AIDS Action Network has always worked to promote open enrollment and make sure both folks living with HIV um, and folks who are not living with HIV but you know need access to healthcare services have good information about open enrollment. Um, Y'all all probably know that there have been some changes to our state's HIV medication assistance program this year that is expanding access to a specific component of that program that provides premium and medication copay assistance subsidies. Um, North Carolina has had a program in place for several years that covered um, a portion of individuals living in HMAP, linking their eligibility to health insurance, but this year income restrictions have been lifted um, due to some both leadership from the Department of Health and Human Services and advocacy work by North Carolina AIDS Action Network. Um, you know, open enrollment, I think, has in many ways sort of become a, a political hot button for the last couple of years. The Trump administration certainly did not put as much robust energy and attention into open enrollment as, um, as the Obama administration did. But we do continue through the last couple of years to see really healthy levels of enrollment. You know, because we they are are those changes to our premium copay medication assistance program this year. We did wanna really spend some time as an advocacy network in these final days of open enrollment, um, raising awareness, making sure people know what tools are available, um, making sure folks have resources and the information they need if they wanna enroll in the program. So we do have three speakers um, who are gonna to speak to some different components and these changes and resources available. Um, Natalie Gupton is with the state's Department of Health and Human Services and runs the premium copay medication assistance program. We're going to have her kick things off and just give an update from um, DHHS and the Division of Public Health about um, what open enrollment has looked like and what um, specifically, you know, enrollment in PCAP looks like for this year. Um, next, my colleague Allison Rice, who's a, a familiar face and friend to the organization, um, Allison has been a longtime champion for ensuring folks have access to health insurance who are living with HIV and help do some really important work out of Duke Law to analyze and look at the various plans that are available um, and, and gives kind of a strong overview that um, may be helpful for folks if you're considering enrolling yourself or helping navigate folks. Um, and then last is my colleague Michael Hoban, who's with Winches, the Western North Carolina Community Health Center. Um, Michael has been running a program through a mini grant we offered to their health system um, that's really targeting and supporting the community in Asheville and Western North Carolina to enroll in the program and are excited to hear about some of the work they're doing. As always, feel free to comment in the chat. Um, we'll take time for Q&A at the end um, and can certainly, you know, want to provide as much information and resources to folks in the final 12 days um, of open enrollment. So with that, Natalie, I will pass things off to you first um, to hear an update um, on the PCAP program. Natalie, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Holly, thank you. My name is Natalie Gutman. I'm the Premium Copay Assistance um, Coordinator for the North Carolina HIV Medication Assistance Program. I want to provide you with an update on the PCAP expansion for 2021 thus far. Um, our staff has reached out to 6,639 uninsured clients to inform them of their potential eligibility for the PCAP. Um, our staff was able to speak to 2,042 clients. Out of those clients, 1,509 were interested in the PCAP program. Um, I have noticed there's a great increase in the number of uninsured clients that are enrolling in ACA with the, um, their federal poverty level of less than 100%. Um, the case managers, the interview interviewers are working closely with clients and navigators to get as many clients enrolled as possible. We are having a great success with that. I just don't have exact numbers um, for the numbers of clients that's enrolling. Case managers and clients are emailing me the required documents, uh, mostly to me. Some of our other staff are receiving them as well, which gives us a quick turnaround time for binder payments to be made. Um, our office will be able to provide exact data on the PCAP expansion mid to late January once we're able to get the client switched over in our system and the member ID cards are received um, for switching. Um, I would like to thank everyone for all of their time and assisting us with the PCAP program with all of our expansion, and we're pushing for great success for 2021. 
Thank you so much, Lee. Awesome, thank you, Natalie. Um, and to really give a shout out to Natalie and her colleagues at the Communicable Disease Branch, you know, this program, I think many folks know, didn't get formal state approval to lift those income restrictions on folks making 100% or less on the poverty level, um, really until just a couple months ago. Um, it was, uh, I believe in August of this year, that that official announcement was able to be made. So um, they've done really important work for the last couple of years serving this community, but obviously lifting that income restriction just made so many more folks eligible. So I know their entire team had to pivot and to move really, really quickly. Um, so we're just thankful for, for all y'all been able to do to respond in a, in a fast timeline. So next, as I said, I'll pass it to Allison Rice. Um, Allison's a former board member of ours at North Carolina AIDS Action Network and professor at Duke Law. Um, she and I speak frequently on this topic and are frequent collaborators. So Allison, thank you for being with us and I'll pass it off to you. Great, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. And, um, <clears throat> and I'm so excited to hear um, Natalie's report about the level of interest and um, pick up in enrollment, you know, it's a heavy, lift for everyone and um, we may not get everybody this time, but I think that um, it's really great to be off to a start with it. So I'm gonna um, share my screen and I have uh, way too many slides as always one has. And what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna go for about 10 minutes and whatever I get through is what I get through. And um, then what I will, uh, um, do is make the slides available to anyone who wants to, who's interested in seeing those. So hold on one second while I get this. So do you all see my slides? Great. All right. So um, let me just start by saying that um, what I'm going to do is just kind of give some updates about this year's um, plans and what, what's on there, what, what to be paying attention to. I'm sure a lot of folks who have been doing this, um, doing enrollment, and the folks at, at HMAP have um, seen this already. Um, but just for um, for those of you who aren't familiar or just a review, I um, wanted to just start by talking about the expansion of, of companies that are in the market this year. Um, we now have six companies. So there's many, many more um, counties that have more options than just Blue Cross Blue Shield, which has throughout the Obama, you know, the Obamacare since 2014 has had plans in every county. Um, this year we have more uh, counties that have other options, which is great. And I'm not sure why this pen mark has gotten on here, but I obviously did something weird. So um, one thing also, some other updates, that many of the plans have networks that are limited to particular health systems, which is really important for folks to be watching out for. Um, there are a lot of more options for Duke patients in the triangle this year, which is great. Um, up until now, we've really had a limitation um, there. And so I know folks that are Duke patients living in the triangle will be happy to see that um, and better Cigna and Bright Health are now offering plans with Duke. Um, HIV drug coverage is still reasonably good. Um, on most plans, we've gone through in our, um, in our report that uh, we've done, which has been circulated and is on the NCAN website, um, we have a, a grid that shows the drug coverage of all the major HIV drugs um, for all the plans. But just as a sort of at the high level, um, most plans have pretty good coverage and better and Blue Cross have the fewest gaps in drugs that are not listed on their formulary. And if somebody wants a drug that's not on formulary, it's going to re it requires getting an exception, which can is no guarantee. So obviously folks are going to want to choose plans that have their drugs. This year, HIV drug costs are generally higher for most insurers. Um, what most of them have done is moved their cost sharing um, up to be basically 40 to 50% coinsurance, um, which uh, means that the drugs are um, going to cost a lot more. You know, if your drug is $2,000, you're paying 50% of that as your portion. The good news is obviously that PCAP is for everyone that gets into PCAP and gets their insurance, that's covered. So it's really not a worry. And in fact, it's kind of an advantage 
because the the when when those costs paid by those costs paid by HMAP do count toward the deductible and the out of pocket maximum, and they'll help people get very quickly to where they need to be, which is they've met their out of pocket maximum and everything is covered without any cost sharing. Um, one other piece that's notable is that the out of pocket maximum this year has is higher and almost all the plans are using the highest allowable out of pocket maximum, which is 85 150 that's even on gold plans, um, which generally are more are rich and have better benefits. Um, and so that means that it's going to take 8550 of drug costs in order to get through that out of pocket maximum and to the point where you no longer have any um, payment obligations. And as you, most of you probably know, HMAP through the PCAP program, program pays premiums. Um, and so it doesn't matter to the individual client what, how much the premium is. Um, and th they also pay all the cost sharing and deductibles related to drugs, which because the drugs are so expensive will get people um, very quickly through their deductible and to their out of pocket maximum. The only thing left is the medical co-pays and cost sharing and um, Ryan White, all the Ryan White networks have funds set aside for that. And so hopefully that will help people in that interim period when they um, are, are waiting to get to their out of pocket maximum. Um, so there's a number of different considerations people have when they're um, signing up. Um, what kind of, whether they, what kind of meta level, um, what the total costs are going to be. Is there a health network in, in um, network? Um, how much are their drugs going to cost them or are they available on the plan? And then the other piece is, is are there some costs that you can like get before you meet your deductible? And um, this year, actually, a lot of plans do have um, access to um, office visits with doc, either primary care and specialists in many cases at a copay level, a re relatively reasonable copay. So it shouldn't be super expensive on a lot of plans for folks to be in that period before they've met their out of pocket maximum and um, then everything's covered. So just if that's something worth looking for as people browse their plans. Um, this, this is just, I'm leaving this, we've talked about all this, but if somebody wants to look at this later, we'll make the slides available. So I just wanted to talk a little about the kind of network issues. Um, it's really important to kind of be thinking about which plan, um, which that, you know, folks providers are in network. And for the most part in the metro areas that have competing health systems, most plans offered are limited to one or the other. So Blue Cross, for example, has plans that are just Atrium in Charlotte, and they also have a plan in Charlotte that's just Novant. In the, um, in the Winston-Salem market, they have a plan that's just with Wake Forest Baptist and another that's with Novant. Um, they also, in, in the Triangle, have a UNC plan. And so it's really critical that, that people pay attention to that. Um, and better also is, is, has their limits. Um, they tend to be Duke Wake Med. They also have plans partnering with Cone, Cape Fear Valley, and a number of other health systems. Um, Bright Health is also is another one that's with Duke and Novant and Cone um, and Mission. Uh, Cigna is now partnering again with Duke and it, is, it has plans with Mission and Vident and other uh, um, health systems. Oscar, which is the new plan up in Winston, in um, Asheville area in the West, is partnering um, with Mission pretty exclusively. Um, and they are uh, offering a lot of telehealth and kind of tech savvy kind of stuff for folks who are more in the, probably in the younger and more tech savvy folks. Um, and then United Healthcare is back again this year and is partnering with a number of different smaller health systems that I've got listed here. Um, there's in folks can search for the providers on the um, networks. This one here, oh, it's upside down actually, but you can go on to the um, company website. But this is the there's a, a search um, that is also available through the um, healthcare.gov. Folks can add their medical providers and their prescription drugs to do that searching right there in healthcare.gov. All right. Um, finding the drugs, when people are looking for their drug coverage, they need to look at both, um, is the drug covered? Does it have any restrictions? And then looking at what tier it's on and how much the tier, the cost is for that tier. 
this is really not as much of an issue for folks who are getting under PCAP, um, but there, there are plenty of folks who aren't able to um, take advantage of that because they aren't eligible for um, the HMAP program generally. Their income is over 300% FPL. And so it's really important for them to pay attention to this. The way you do this is you go to your formulary and um, you can see the drugs and you can see what the tier is and any specialty or other kind of restrictions like prior authorization. There are very little in a way of drug um, plan restrictions for drugs. So if they're covered, they're pretty, there's very few plans have anything like prior authorization or step or any kind of um, those kind of issues, which is good. Um, in our report that I'm displaying up here has a lot of detail, but one thing we do have is a table showing all the drug coverage. And so you can kind of look at that at a glance to, to look if there's a particular drug you wanna see what, um, which of the, the plans is worth even exploring to, to make sure you have it. Thanks to Dante Pereira for helping um, assemble this in a very tedious job, um, but thanks for, for to him for doing that. Um, as you know, what, PCAP pays premiums and deductibles um, and drug cost sharing, and it just doesn't pay the other costs as, as we've talked about. Um, I'm gonna, I have a um, couple other pieces. There's a lot of words on this, this slide, but the, the main point is if you are qualified for PCAP, um, really just find your doctors and your drugs on the plan. And there's a lot of finessing that may, could make it be better, but that's really the big issue. For folks that don't qualify for PCAP, it's um, really, and don't have assistance, they're gonna be relying on copay cards and patient advocate foundation and other uh, ways to get their, their um, uh, drug costs and, and met. Um, the one thing I did wanna point out is folks who rely on copay cards, um, there is, uh, um, I think I have it listed here, yeah, on uh, the next slide, that there is a um, something called a copay accumulator where those copay cards, some, some insurers will not count those copay cards toward the um, out-of-pocket maximum and deductible, so it's kind of wasted effort. Um, and I've listed the, the plans that have those copay accumulators uh, that we are aware of is Ambetter, Cigna, and Oscar. So folks that over on the higher income levels who really need to rely on those on that tool um, need to um, try to avoid steer clear of those. Um, the Blue Cross does not have one as, as far as we can tell. And so um, that's uh, probably a good bet in most markets. There's gonna be some kind of plan folks can use. Um, and, for the most part. Um, I'm gonna just one last thing before I, I'll stop, which is to don't forget that, that this, when open enrollment ends on December 15th, that's not the end of enrolling into PCAP and Affordable Care Act insurance. Um, P, there is a special enrollment period option. And I know that, that over the past, there have been folks enrolling during that period. So if someone loses their job and their insurance, which in this world is certainly a, um, something that happens a lot, get married, get divorced, have a baby, lose their insurance for whatever reason, um, they could put, qualify for a special enrollment period so that they could get into, um, buy, get go back into healthcare.gov, get an insurance plan during the year and also sign up for PCAP mid-year. So that's just an important thing to remember. So I'm gonna just stop there and um, we'll make the slides available. There's a couple more with more wonky stuff on it, but. Uh, let me stop and then let folks um, have questions later and um, turn it over to Michael. I can't hear nobody. Allison, I have a quick question. Do you know if, you know, with surprise bills that can come in the mail, if you have insurance, I guess, like for outstanding health costs that can come, do you know if, if individual consumers would be responsible for that? Or if those that, all paperwork goes to the state, and like I'm curious to know how that works. Well, no, the the, um, the state is only paying for drug costs, and there shouldn't be any surprises around drug costs. And and surprise billing is something that that will happen often when there is. It, it may be a situation where someone goes to the emergency room and the emergency room is in network, but there might be doctors working there that aren't. Just weird things like that that do happen and that happens in all forms of insurance. Um, I think I have not seen a lot of that happening um, with these 
with these plans, but it certainly is a risk out there. And that is going to be something that someone is obligated on. I know that there has been um, work on the federal level about to try to do something about surprise billing. I mean, it tends to happen when there's some, you get care from somebody you don't realize is out of your network through no fault of your own usually. Um, and then your the network, the, the insurer doesn't pay for it. And that that's an important thing to note about all these plans is they're, you got to be in network. Very few of them have any out of network coverage at all. And so making sure the labs or whatever, any of those things are in network you know, is important, you know, um, be, and just always be alert to that. You know, Duke is in network, but Duke Hospice might be out of network. And then, then someone's up um, responsible for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think the one thing I'd point out about um, Allison's um, comments about this not being the only sort of bite at the apple in terms of open enrollment is something we're certainly very interested in. Um, as she said, you know, there are opportunities that if you lose your job, you can have a special enrollment period. Um, I also think it is increasingly likely and there is a lot of conversation about the Biden administration, you know, implementing a national special enrollment period in 2021 that there's a lot of advocacy groups who are saying they think one of the first things a new health and human services secretary should move on is some kind of special enrollment period just given COVID and given that the current administration hasn't been as supportive of open enrollment. So it may be that, you know, I think this has been a new topic for our HIV community. I know a number of folks have been thinking through locally, like, is getting insurance the best, um, best task for me? And absolutely, I think if we do see a special enrollment period, we are going to be very interested in continuing to do promotion about this in 2021 as well um, over time to make sure folks just have as many opportunities to enroll in health insurance and have good information if it's a good fit for them. Um, well, next, I will pass it off to Michael from Winches. Um, as we mentioned, NCH Action Network earlier this year um, provided many grants to four different organizations around the state um, to do special targeted work around open enrollment and these changes to PCAP. Um, Want to give a shout out to the Campaign for Southern Equality based in Asheville who helped provide some funding to help support that mini grant program. Um, so Michael and the team at Winches was one of the recipients of one of our many grants um, and want to give them a chance to share, I think, some really exciting and innovative work they've been doing in the western part of the state to make sure folks have good information about this program. Michael, awesome. passing it to you. Good morning. Thank you, first of all, for inviting us to share what we're doing here. I'm very excited. Um, my name is Michael Hoban, and I am the, my official title is a transgender slash HIV bridge and retention coordinator for Western North Carolina Community Health Services. I'm also a trans man and husband, father, and human rights advocate. So I'm gonna share my screen so you can see a little bit about what we're doing. Hey Lee, can you allow me to share? It says only one participant at a time. I think Allison, that's probably because you are still sharing. Um... Try now. Are you still not able to share? True. Hmm. Allison. Uh, I, I got it now. Awesome. As I often joke, I think we're all like still learning. And even after six months of Zoom, we've all continue to learn and grow when it comes to technology right now. So I'll tell you a little bit about Winches. First of all, we are a federally qualified health center as well as a region one Ryan White administrator. We currently have a patient population of HIV positive patients of 750 plus, as well as serve over 400 transgender and gender non-conforming patients. Uh, we also launched the Hive, which is an integrated as well as standalone website and social media outreach for our HIV prevention and care programs specifically. And so I was really excited to see the requirements for this grant because it really fits with kind of my passion and what I'm trying to do in shifting our outreach as well as using art to kind of end our change stigma, stigma through visual representation. 
Okay. So as we were deciding like how to best make use of this grant money, we had prioritized three different stakeholder groups, which is one first and foremost, the patients, second grant requirements, as well as organizational interests. You know, how are we going to reach our patients as well as those within our service area? So we came up with three key goals. First being to inform, right? We're gonna use social media channels to do that because it's the most cost-effective way for us to do that in such a short amount of time. As well as using incentives, right? To really, what we, we had a few programs that we launched um, with emergency, emergency financial assistance. And what we realized is that it was really useful in engaging some of those patients that had kind of fallen out of care. Right? And when you're dealing with a trauma-informed lens, you can kind of understand that sometimes care or insurance access just isn't enough when people are struggling and to survive. So we thought incentive was a great way to kind of pull some of those people back in. And then also inclusion, right? And the way we decided to do that was to feature queer POC lens by using queer POC artists, as well as featuring queer POC subjects in our outreach. So what does this look like? I'll show you first, these are a few examples of some of our just image posts that we're using. And then also videos, and I'll show you three examples and then we'll look at some data as to see how effective it's been so far. So that's what it looks like. And to date, we have enrolled 104 participants, our patients in the PCAP promo. That's, um, we still have about 100 that are PCAP eligible, but that haven't actually enrolled yet. So we're working on that still. Um, we have posted 10 ads, um, three which are currently active, seven which have already completed, and we'll probably do another one to two ads that are paid for boosting through our social media channels. We have overspent from the, you know, over the end, the end can budget of $800 that we set aside, which we planned for, because again, this serves our patients as well as our organizational interests. So we have had a total reach over 63,000 with total unique link clicks over a thousand. But what we've learned is the most effective measure of the success has really been to pay attention to unique website visitors, which has been awesome right because people aren't you know some people with the stigma uh, are not interested in liking or following our page but what they are doing is going to our website so we have had 557 total site sessions since we launched the pcap promo which has been up 94 percent 
from previous period. That's excellent. That's showing that we're reaching people who are really interested and then looking into, I mean, that movement from social media to the website, I mean, that is gold. And again, of those 557 total site sessions, 514 have been new or unique site visitors. Again, incredible returns there. So 90% of these new visitors have come in through our social media channels, which again is showing that that outreach is effective in bringing people in, linking, engaging. That is all I have for you. Again, thank you so much. I'm super excited about this work as well as opportunity presented to you. Uh, uh, okay, now I'm unmuted. Awesome, thank you, Michael. Yeah, I think we've, um, you know, are really impressed with the work that Winches did and are impressed with all the folks doing um, promotion of this program across the state, but particularly felt that Winches was, you know, I think, particularly innovative and aggressive in a way that I think we want to be in terms of making sure our community has access to this information and can roll if they need to. Um, I'll pause here and open it up. You know, I saw a lot of exciting responses um, in the chat to this work that Winches is doing, but um, questions or comments or thoughts um, from anybody listening in about um, this work? We'll open it up now. I just have a question. Who does your media work? It's really amazing. And like, I, it's really hard to find that talent. It's like, are you guys doing it in-house or do you have outside folks? It is solely me. So some of the art is- You're about to get some job offers, I think. <laughs> the art is my wife and I. My wife is a Native American queer woman. I am a white trans dude. And so the hive is also was a concept that I developed because we're not seeing ourselves in HIV prevention and care outreach. And it matters, you know, when you're not used to seeing yourself and then you do, that's effective. And so the leadership here has been highly supportive of any ideas that I bring to the table, but I call it vision with feet. You have to have the vision and you have to move it and make it happen. So the website design, all of the video work, all of the art, two people, me and my wife. Wow. Thank you so much. I mean, that's that really means a lot to me. Thank you so much. You, you need to get NCAN to fund you to train people around the state to do this work because that is so impressive. Well, I will tell you really what matters is having the, pay, the populations you're trying to target doing the work. You know, bring, like call it a queer POC lens, but it matters because what the way we see and interact and view the world, like it's different. And so seeing that difference and really like showcasing that difference, it, it is so important. But also your technical skills are amazing too. <laughs> Let's not okay. get that far. <laughs> Thank you very much. In addition to everything else. Thank you so much for that. That's great. Hey, I, can y'all hear me? Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, Lee, how you doing? I came in late. And so um, I enjoyed your video. That was fun. Can I, and I put a message in there. Can I sign up with y'all? Am I able to sign up? I'm Miss Charlotte. Can I sign up with y'all? Yeah, because I need to I need to let you know is that. So the uh, I didn't know that the only two um, insurance um, whatever companies that was here was um, uh, Bright Health and um, Blue Cross Blue Shield. So by now that my um, my income has really decreased, they have me with Bright Health. And when I had my daughter on Bright Health, um, we were seeing like we was paying more money for everything, like her asthma medicine. And um, so right now I have a zero copayment for this year. But I don't know whether or not I informed the lady did I need to inform them that I was taking HIV medications? Because we have, like I said, we have Bright Health. And if I had went with Blue Cross Blue Shield, it would have been a copay and all this other kind of stuff she was trying to explain to me, which I was like, I was asking a number of questions, but I, I don't know whether or not these are people just, they just hire and they do, send them through an orientation, that be it. Um, so I was really wanting my plan to be looked over because I'm with Bright Health. She, I don't know whether or not it's went through yet, but that's the insurance that me and my daughter is up under. 
And so I'm really not satisfied with it, <laughs> with the Bright Health piece. I don't know. Yeah, so you can contact winches and I can provide you information for that. And whether you're a patient of ours or not, we have okay. specialists that will help you, you know, optimize your plan choice, no doubt. Okay, okay, okay. So if you give me that, I would do that. I will. I'll put it in the chat. The okay, thank you. Of course. One, th one thing I just wanted to point out, and, and um, I know Natalie would probably remind of this, is that if you to be on the PCAP program and have them pay your expenses, you have to be on a plan for just yourself. You can't have other family members on that plan. You have to like get separate ones for each. Um, and that's because they're not allowed to pay for other people. They can only pay. But that, well, that's fine. Positive. Yeah. So just, okay. Well, that's fine with me. But I just need you know, and I can get her one. So I have I have no problem with that. And I'll just Janice and both for mm -hmm. you and for everybody else. Um, you know, the North Carolina Navigator Consortium is also a really great resource um, on this topic. They are um, housed out of legal aid of North Carolina and have I've been very interested and supportive of the work that we've been doing to try to especially make sure folks on PCAP are able to access insurance this year. Um, the Navigator Consortium phone number um, is, I just had it pulled up and of course now I lost it. I'm, I'm typing it into the chat. Oh, now. perfect. Um, so Allison's typing it into the chat. Um, they, um, are able that have even a, a person based in Guilford County who Cone Health Foundation is covering costs for to explicitly help folks in the triad enroll in this program. Um, so very um, strong group and really trained in terms of helping folks figure out like what's the best health insurance plan for you. Um, again, that the number is 855-733-3711. Um, you know, if you're trying okay, to Okay, so you out, need to slow down. Okay, I got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got it in the chat. I'm sorry, Lee. I was trying to write fast, but I see it in the chat. Okay, I'm sorry. Awesome. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and if folks are listening to this recording after the fact, again, I'll say that super slowly. It's um, 855-733-3711. 855-733-3711. Um, because I think Allison, has, you know, illuminated that like figuring out what the best plan for you is really challenging. Um, and also PCAP again is not for everyone. Um, PCAP okay. covers folks, uh, the, the overall HIV medication assistance program covers folks who make 300% of the poverty level or less. Um, so that's about like for an individual, for one person, that's about $36,000 a year as you, if your household size increases, um, that number increases a little bit as well. Um, but just, you know, just to remind everybody of that context, not everybody is going to be eligible for the PCAP program, but you very well may be able to find through Obamacare and through the marketplace, um, you know, plans that are subsidized and things that work for you if you fall above that income level. Well, I think I fall up under that income level now. So uh, way under that income level now. So I would try, um, I would talk to all the information that I would try both of the information that y'all have put in the, uh, put in the chat. Awesome. Um, so I'm appreciative. I'm real appreciative of that because I've always struggled with um, trying to find insurance or trying to find some means of how to cover uh, my medication. And, and it's been for like 14 years like this. Sometimes it, 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 it's like, it's okay. And then other times it's like, I'm up and down, up and down and trying to um, get, um, get my medication covered or, or trying to find a way that I don't have to pay so much out of pocket. You know, when I do, um, you know, when I, when I'm able, sometimes I'm not able to pay out of pocket like that all the time, you know, Thank you. So definitely make sure you're coordinating to with the person you get your HMAP done through to get on the PCAP program. So they'll pay all those drug costs. You won't have any of those drug costs. Okay. So can I ask you this? Y'all know Joel that works with um, Dr. West um, here. Isn't that, is that part of what he does or he works with Ryan White? You know, Joel? I, I, I'm not sure we are the best group to talk about that level of specificity. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
But yeah, Janice, like absolutely, like I would say reach out to Wenches, reach out to the Navigator Consortium. And I think Allison and I would be happy as best of our abilities, just to remind folks, neither of us are medical providers, but I think know how to make the systems work for folks if you wanna talk about your individual situation. Any other questions, comments, thoughts from folks on the line? I'm gonna give folks one final kind of moment of truth for um, any final questions or comments before we wrap up. I just wanna thank you, Lee, and North Carolina Ace Action Network for um, putting these webinars together to bring information to the men and women around the world and all this. Um, really don't have access, but um, this is just so um, rewarding because when you got people like myself that work with you and Allison and everybody to, you know, make, make way and just to be able to um, help people get the access to care and all that they need. Um, I just want to thank you once again for your hard work, your dedication and making it possible. And thank you to all the great presenters, Michael, Allison, continue to doing the great work you're doing. Um, your videos, Michael was awesome. Your media work, like you, like Allison said, you finna get some work because um, you're awesome, man, and I appreciate you. All right. Well, with that, I think we are gonna wrap up. Um, I'm gonna stop our recording. Um, thank you all so much, everybody, for being on. Um, as I said before, we have 12 days left um, of this current open enrollment period. Um, if you have ideas or thoughts about how we can really promote it in these last like less than two weeks, um, please feel free to be in touch. Um, we will email out um, Allison and Michael's slides to everybody who participated and post this recording on YouTube later this afternoon. So thanks so much, everybody, and be well.